who are visiting today, and nice to have you with us. Normally Christmas Day is one of our smallest services. Last year I think we had 35 people. Uh, so I prepared everything anticipating 35 for Christmas Day this year. And there were 95 people here. Uh, which was lovely. It was the largest Christmas celebration that there had been uh, since I came eight years ago. And uh, it's nice to come to Epiphany and I trust you've all had uh, a good Christmas and New Year. Um, here in, uh, in, in Scotland, New Year is a big celebration. And, um, and we had the privilege of celebrating in the midst of nowhere in France. And we're able to return uh, this week. And so we come to Epiphany. Uh, I often think of the Epiphany uh, as another word for it as being the Eureka Sunday. You know, uh, in, in history, when, um, when something was Archimedes, when he discovered something, he said, Eureka, I got it. And that's what Epiphany is. The whole story of the Epiphany is, yeah, we now know what it's all about. And so we're going to start by standing to sing, Lord, the light of your love is shining, and the words that should be on the screen. Years upon years, I think we started as uh, coming 
together for children, was that right? And so mothers and toddlers and then now uh, of people of a certain age. Uh, and I think that's a polite way to say it, isn't it? <laughs> and, um, and they do up the church for Christmas. And we come to the end of, of Christmas. But um, the crest of the um, Sembra, or whatever you call it in your language, will remain until uh, the 2nd of February, which is the day of presentation of Christ in the temple. Uh, the other decorations will disappear. So thank you again to Jesus Topics for all the work you do on that. But we don't seem to have any wise men, I think. Is that right? We've never had any wise men. No. So, I thought, so I thought, how do we replace the wise men? And I thought, well, the purpose of a Sunday is for all of us to come, particularly in Epiphany Sunday, and to offer the whole of the year to God. So I thought, instead of being the wise men, it could just be the wise people. And so I want you to think of yourselves this morning and everything we do as the wise people who have come to see Jesus. Uh, and of course, in the story, we don't know what age he was. Herod ordered the death of every child under two. Uh, we know that he was no longer in a stable because, in fact, the wise men went to a house. We have no idea how many of them there were. Um, we know, only know that they brought three gifts. The rest is unknown, and I think it's unknown because it's actually not very important. Uh, and what is important is what we're going to be thinking of later on. That they came not from Israel, but they came from further east. They came probably from uh, what's now Iran, from Persia. And at that time, it was uh, one of the centers of the great trade routes. So if you went down to Leitana on Thursday night, uh, there would be there as one Asian, one African, and one European figure. Now we have no idea uh, whether that was so. I suspect if uh, there were suddenly Africans in the early church in the Book of Acts, uh, it could well be because of the trade routes, if there was a dark person there, there were Indian, because there was that trade route from Persia to India, if there was an Asian, it would be from a Chinese person or a Tibetan, because the trade routes went right over. And anyway, we ended up with Jesus. So this morning, as we come to worship, you are the wise men, you are the Magi. And so another thing we do, think of yourself in that way. So we are going to say together Psalm 72. I have completely fooled those upstairs this morning because I gave them the wrong version. So we will ignore all the ones I have on this. And then we will read Psalm 72 together. We'll read the whole Psalm together. May the kings of the and of distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present him with gifts. May all kings bow down to him, and all nations serve him. For he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help. He will take the kingdom of the weak and the needy, and save the needy. From death. You will rescue them from oppression and violence, for precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live, may gold from Shema be given to him, may people ever pray for him and bless him all day long. Praise the Lord. To please sit down. We have come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Faithful one whose word is mine, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I want us to say together the St. George's Prayer, which is on your orders of service. Uh, particularly as we come into a new year, I don't use it every week, but uh, as we come into a new year, it's good to think, why do we exist, what do we exist for, what are our aims and desires? Our Father, as individuals and as a community, may we come to know and love you more and more. May we feel your love and care 
through each other. May we be witnesses to Christ wherever we are, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, may we be attentive to you, to our neighbor, and to your world. Amen. After the service today, there is a cake sale uh, for um, uh, of Mother's Union, uh, which here is called the um, Maloa, which is uh, Mother's Union listens, observes, and acts. So if you'd like to buy a cake, you should be there along with a tea and coffee, which is free, although uh, you're welcome to leave a donation. Um, please do afterwards, and uh, Mother's Union will be meeting uh, after the service today. And um, the money from this, uh, from Mother's Union, has gone to Peru. And, uh, and uh, I think there are a number of people from Peru here this morning. Those who are from Peru, could you please stand if you're from Peru? Peru. <laughs> Bienvenidos uh, out there. Welcome. And uh, that's what the money from our cake sale goes to. It goes to the work of the, um, of the Anglican Church in Peru. It has been, not necessarily always will in the future. And uh, so, thank you very much. So, your cakes, as you enjoy them, just think it's going to a great use. Uh, so, this goes with you this morning, and we're going to stand and sing our hymn of celebration Will You Come and Follow Me? Why do we have confession every week? There's two types of tradition. One type of tradition is we do it simply because it's always been done. Another type of tradition says, have a think about it. And we know why we do it. Uh, I hate the former traditions. Uh, I, I refuse to do something just because it's always been done. Things must have a purpose and a meaning. And having confession every Sunday 
is to do with beginning a new week, ready to serve God afresh. And really all of this morning's service is about that. The past year has gone with all its joys and all its sadnesses, and we come into a new year. Uh, during communion this morning, uh, Deborah will be uh, standing over there and will be anointing people who wish, uh, both for healing from the past, physical healing or emotional healing, uh, or healings of grief, and also for a sense of epiphany, of freshness with God. And confession is about that. It's about saying, Lord, I haven't got it all right, but really my heart is I want to get it all right. And therefore I confess my sins and I come to you. And therefore we say the words together that are on our orders of service. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is us, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. We're going to stand and say together in Gloria and in Chelsea, the Lord your God in the highest. We didn't say this during Advent. Advent, the weeks leading up to Christmas, is a time of thinking why Jesus had to come, because he had to come for us because of our sins and failures. And then we come in to follow the angels who on that Christmas night sang Gloria to God in the highest glory in Excelsior. So we're going to stand and say the words together if we're on the audience of service. Glory to God in the highest. Say when I make a 
your stage to look at any uh, Benedictine, beautiful, uh, illuminated Bible, there is always a mistake because only God is perfect. We're going to sing a song as we prepare to listen to the gospel now. The Lord is my light. It's a tasty chant. And uh, we will stand and sing it. Please just join in when you can. If you know it, join in straight away. We're going to do this acapella. And it's a round, so if you know where the round starts, you can do the second part too. I'm just going to leave it up to you to make. Of God. 
And if you go through your New Testament, you discover that that was one of the biggest issues that can Gentiles be belong to the people of God. And another name for this idea is called the shining forth of God's love for the whole world. It's a week of mission of God being for everybody. Stars are amazing things, aren't they? I, I love being in places where there is no light pollution and you can just see the place absolutely full of stars. That's been our experience. And uh, I went out in the middle of the night uh, last week and uh, our own home is in the centre of France. Uh, all the lights in the village go out at 11 o'clock at night and it's complete darkness. You just see all the stars and the, stars, the sky was clear and the Milky Way and everything. How on earth could a star lead anyone in all of that? Uh, we were missionaries in Papua New Guinea working with university students. And uh, one of the most amazing experiences of uh, my life, we were going down, it was very romantic, we were going down on a, 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 a steamer, or a, a, a passenger, a cargo ship uh, down the China Sea. And um, we were sleeping, our two children were with us, and they were under, a uh, uh, doctor was two I think at the time, and our son was six, and the, we were sleeping on bunks, riveted to the deck, with our top hauling over us, and that, that was all the covering we had. Then in the middle of the night, the first officer came and shook me awake, and said the captain would like me to come to the bridge. And uh, we were the only non Papua New Guineans on the boat, and I uh, thought, this is strange. And we're up, uh, and these people he really knew their stars and really knew their waters. And the captain said, There is a star out there that I don't recognize, and I wonder if you can tell me what it is, or how I could tell him what it was, who knew nothing about sea or sailing. Uh, I had no idea, but. Uh, I could tell it was not a plane, I could tell it wasn't a satellite, I could tell that, um, well I couldn't really tell, but I didn't really believe in UFOs. Uh, it would ruin my faith if they existed, but uh, I assumed it wasn't a UFO, and I knew he knew his stars, and so for me the only logical alternative was it was a new star, that a star had split. I couldn't think of any other logic. Uh, to apply to it. It turned out when you Time magazine about two months later that I was right. <laughs> and uh, it was a star and split. And all of a sudden, this new star was doing something that this experienced captain had never experienced before. For me, this story coming out of that experience of the star with these magi is not too far fetched. But for God, who is bigger, and greater than everything. And in this story, these magi come and they bring three gifts. They bring gold. Does anyone know traditionally what the gold is taken to refer to? What is the significance of gold? Royalty. Royalty, to do with his being king. And of course, that was a threat to Herod, wasn't it? Because the king of the Jews was somehow not in the palace of the king of the nation. And the Herod didn't like that, and that's why he ordered, as the story goes on, the death of all the children of the two. Because he didn't want any threat. But Jesus was a king. And that always has been a threat ever since all over the world. Because if Jesus is king, whoever seeks to rule people completely actually is not able to because people have in their hearts another king, a different king, someone of a completely different way of looking to things. The gold is his royalty. The king um, was coming. And then the second one was frankincense. Uh, the telling of frankincense is becoming very rare and it's really quite expensive now. But there, what is frankincense? What is it? It's an incense. It's something to smell. And uh, what is in a sense used for? For 
especially for magic issues. For sorry. Oh, boys. Oh, right. I never knew that. <laughs> uh, it's used in worship. <coughs> uh, many of you will know the Anglican church is very rare, and there are some very high Anglican churches. Uh, that I can remember the first time I was throwing incense around at a church. <laughs> and um, there was this man leading me along, you know, as he. Um, I put incense here and we walked and we read the gospel from the middle, put incense, and then he took me by the sleeve and brought me over to the cross and I had to put incense on that. And the place was covered in incense all around. Uh, according to the Bible, in the book of Revelation, it says that it says it's a process that the, the angels carry the prayers of children of God that went to God. Absolutely. And that morning, the first time I was going to use incense, I was saying to the Lord, Lord, I find this very strange, it's not natural to me. And that was my reading that morning. And I felt God saying, listen, this is all right. And the beautiful smell to worship. And when I did a celebrated communion that Sunday, there was all this incense around. It was a sense of something being holy and special and very beautiful. And the Bible says that Christ is our real priest, the one who comes before the Father and brings everything to him. The incense of frankincense is about him being priest and of our prayers. Mirror, what was it used for? Does anyone know? Yeah, it's when you died. It, it was proclaiming of Christ's death. Mirror was used for bodies of death. And in this, it's taken that the myrrh was looking forward to the fact that this one who was being, who had been born was one who was going to die. He was going to be the Savior. Christ is King, Christ is Priest, and Christ is Savior. And in these readings from the Old Testament, it said that may all kings fall down before him, all nations give him service. Nations from Isaiah, the nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. When they came into that house and saw the Jesus, uh, whatever age he was, what did they do? They bowed down and gave him homage. Um, in most of your pews, you will see that there is um, a kneeler that for prayers, you're able to bow down. We do it when we kneel for communion in this church. You can bow down. And uh, it's interesting in the Bible that the, the body is used in all sorts of different ways. When Christ prayed, he stood to pray. When he taught, he sat to teach. He bowed down. The whole body was used to express worship. And one of the things I love, if people wish to lift their hands and praise to God, then do it. If you wish to kneel down, then do it. It's a way of saying to God, listen, my whole self is for you. But Epiphany, with these people coming who were not Jews, is the manifestation, the realization of Christ to the Gentiles, to the whole world. Many people have argued against Christian mission over the years, and I want to make 2023 a year that we think of on mission here in St. George's. Um, I can remember um, someone that we worked with in Papua New Guinea who said that before the missionaries came, our life expectancy was 30 years. It is now 60 years. I would rather live 60 years than 30. You see, mission actually transformed so many, many different things. But I would like to say also that Jesus transforms. And that Muslims and Hindus and superstitious agnostic Europeans, all of them knew Jesus, whatever the background is. We're going to be having an Alpha course here, which is going to be led by... Um, 
Jenny and by Simon, uh, beginning the 22nd of January. And uh, in my first church, I, uh, when I, after I was ordained, uh, I led an Alpha course for those who didn't speak English as a first language. And uh, there was a young man there, and uh, he was from Afghanistan. And he had seen his parents murdered by the Taliban and his brother buried alive. He escaped and came to Britain and happened to come to our church. He was a Muslim, but uh, was seeking for something and had read in the Quran about Isaac, Isa, uh, who is Jesus. And that made him want to find out about Jesus. And he came and uh, he informed me. Uh, we had on the Monday night, he phoned me on the Tuesday and Wednesday and said, John, I would like to meet you after church on Sunday. I am going to become a follower of Jesus. And so we met after church on that Sunday and he became a follower of Christ. And eventually he was baptized and confirmed and became a lively member of the church. Because he found in Christ a freedom and a light, and a life that is found nowhere else. This message is a message for the whole world. I told the story of, um, I think it was on Christmas Day, that the week before Christmas, um, uh, I had a WhatsApp from a country where you're not allowed to become a Christian. That during, uh, I think it was in 2021, I had a, an email from someone in Manchester in England saying, I am from a country where you're not allowed to become a Christian. I became a Christian in England. My sister is coming from that country to Barcelona as a tourist and she wants to give her life to Christ. And uh, we met and I said, well, I can I wrote back and said, well, I'd love to meet her, but we're not going to promise anything. Uh, we need to hear her story. And uh, Debbie and Jenny and myself met with her, and uh, she was baptized out there. Uh, and she's not in our records, so no one can discover who she is. And in her country, there was an old church. She said, "I used to go into that. I go into that church as a tourist, and I pray to God, and uh, pretending I'm a tourist who is looking around it." And on um, Christmas Eve. She wrote and said, one of my friends has just been taken prisoner by the authorities. And you can imagine her feeling of someone who had just only recently become a follower of Christ, living with the fear and the anguish that brings. And the question that I want to ask, and that I ask myself all the time, having worked in Muslim countries, question I ask is, is this Jesus Christ worth it? Is this Jesus Christ worth it? And I'd just like to say that he is absolutely. And that is the message of Epiphany. Jesus Christ is for all the world. And that is why we worship him today. People forgiven by God and rejoicing in Jesus Christ, we stand and say together the Apostles' Creed, which is in your orders of service. This is what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the death. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
or kneel as we come to pray. Prayers this morning are more reflective and silent, and I would just simply suggest some things for you to pray about and uh, bring them before God. Let's pray for our world. It calls for Ukraine and other troubled areas. Remember the woman of Afghanistan. Remember the political unrest in Peru and other troubled parts of the world. In the silence, bring before God any parts of the world that you know and are concerned about. Let us remember in prayer our families, the many of you here scattered all over the world, and commit them to God. Remember those we know who are ill, body, mind, or spirit, and those who are mourning. And we commit them to God. And let's commit ourselves. response this morning where we can sing together, O oh Lord, hear my prayer.
finance to God, just to say if uh, most of the money for this church actually comes in by standing order, and uh, it's entirely finance, self-financed, and there are leaflets at the back if you wish to give, and there are uh, electronic means by which you can give to the church. What we're going to sing as our offering hymn this morning, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. service too. 
all Christians who love the Lord and receive communion in their own churches or are baptized uh, are welcome to receive communion here. This is Christ's table, and he is the one who welcomes us. All the words you need are in your altars of service. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went out about among us. He opened wide his arms on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. And so he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of our enemies, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, your holy indeed, the source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us, the body and blood of your dear Son, who in the same night that was betrayed took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is a mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, and we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and send and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints of all the ages may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom the unity of the Holy Spirit, blessing and honour and glory and honour be yours and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit and welcome the Sunday School back now uh, to join us. And we join together in the prayer in whatever language you wish that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. We bring this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share. From your faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink and remember that he dies for you. 
feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Jesus is the Lamb of God. He takes away the sins of the world. As for those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. As I mentioned earlier on, we're going to be having anointing for both for healing, physical healing or emotional and spiritual, and for those who wish a freshness, an epiphany of Christ in 2023. And after you receive communion, you go over there and uh, Debbie and you will be anointed. For those who are assisting with communion, please come forward. feel comfortable as they come to communion. So if you're uncomfortable sharing a common cup, which all tests of children is entirely safe, but uh, if you're uncomfortable, please feel free uh, to not take it. Um, Niketi will have a cup which is non-alcoholic, if you prefer that. And also if you require it, we have gluten-free wafers, uh, if that is needed. All of that is to make it be comfortable.
thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We are here to offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Again, for those who came later, just a big thank you to Denise, who led the service last week when we were away. And he's part of that, and for all the work you do with the Sunday School. And um, uh, Jenny is going to give us a notice just now. Jenny. For those who are, are new here or are visiting, Jenny is in charge of our youth work.
or curry, uh, rye beer. What's next week's menu? Chicken curry. Chicken curry. Chicken curry next week. The process is that there's a box at the back. You put in 15 euros or more, and um, the chicken uh, the curry is delivered next Sunday. It's enough for two people uh, at that, and you just write your name and the Ranbir family uh, prepare it. It's, uh, curries are very good, and uh, recommended. So it's a way of being able to assist Ranbir's family uh, through a tough time. Keep praying for Ranbir and the family and uh, for their future uh, and how things work out for them. Am I missing anything? I'm not sure whether it was completely clear. This is Don, never mind. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure John was completely clear about the Mother's Union, uh, but we're doing an enrollment next Sunday, and there are five new members we're enrolling, which is very exciting. Um, so all of you who are members of the Maloa Mother's Union here, please stay after for about 20 minutes. We're going to plan the service. We're taking it over mostly, not completely. Um, John and I have talked about it this morning, so we know who's doing what, more or less. Um, but please don't go away. We're not having our usual lunch. Next week, there's a pop isn't there, John? I think so. Well, it, it was, it's a bit difficult with, with um, the 1st of January being a Sunday. So, so we discussed it. Um, we planned the pop before Christmas, but then, of course, Christmas was Sunday, the first was a Sunday, and we felt we couldn't really advertise it until today when everybody was back because there wasn't much point, people would forget during the holidays. So there is a potluck next Sunday after the service, um, and uh, no food for Mother's Union today. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. And so we come to the end of our service as we go to serve God in the coming week, and we're going to start and sing a hymn uh, of a great zest. Zest is a great word. I've been thinking about zest over the last few weeks. And zest, I think of the zeal that may uh, zest, is the zeal. May my zeal go on. Uh, e, may we excel in this year in everything that's good and true. S, may God's strength come to us in quietness and trust. And T, may we be in troth, if you know that old English word, to God and all his ways in 2023. So we sing this one with zest, King of Kings and Lord of Lords.